so this is our first uh, YouTube clip we're doing. We recently purchased this Swift caravan from uh, England. It's the Conqueror 645. We ordered it from a guy called Paul, who we've used as an agent. He purchased it through Michael Jordan in England for us. Now I'll go around and show you all the great parts first. Um, great parts are very easy to tow and very easy to hook up. It's got um, good lines, looks great, tows very well. Your out outlet's here for your water, compartment in there for your power. The back two of the toilet compartment. Now you see I've uh, got a big aerial on here because the one that they give you is absolute crap. I put a 2.4 on, it had about a 2 inch 4 one on it and it broke. So that was just rubbish. Um, we bought it from the UK knowing that there wouldn't be a warranty on it, but we saved quite a bit of money doing it. But in saying that, we have then tried to uh, get some things fixed on the van that we don't believe were warranty, we believe that they were just rubbish. Either the guys were thalidomide or blind. Not sure which, but well, it could have been a combination of both. Um, in the first 24 hours, well first of all when we got it, the, this wheel here, the, the original wheel, was broken off, snapped in half, and then a week later, this whole contraption here came out the top. How that happened, I've got no idea. Uh, last week, there was a cover on here, or it flew off in the wind. So I took the other one off. I found that it wasn't even glued on, it was just poked in there. And uh, these things have gone. You know, we've only had it since May, and it's still just only December. Oh, this one's gone too. Yeah. Uh, this door, this door here managed to come off and crack and carry on, so that's very nice. Um, windows are awesome, but the double glazing part is fantastic. Uh, this one of the handles in here, I think it's right on the other side, it's just so loose, and I can't work out how to get into it to fix it because it's a sealed unit and part of it's inside between the two layers, so I'm not sure what, how I'm going to do that. Now if you come and look down here at the door, we've got a few interesting facts here. The, the um, unladen weight is 1,615 and the maximum laden weight is 775. So that only gives us a load, a weight that we can put in it of 160 kilograms. So when, you, when you're going on the road, as we have, 160 kilograms is nothing. So it's kind of, you know, a bag of clothes and a bag of food. Um, this side's fine. If we come around, back around the other side here. These are really cool. These lights work well. There's more along the sides here. They're great. See, I've got a couple of hatches up here for that aerial when it falls down. Um, this, it's not the, it's not the camera, it's not the um, caravan's fault, it's the New Zealand uh, self-containment system is bollocks. The tube that feeds this is two-thirds the size of that, it's about a diameter of about that. It's just rubbish, and that's supposed to take all of our, our grey water. Uh, we mounted a, a uh, clothesline on the back, which is great. It just slips out. We can take it inside when we move. Also, put a uh, camera back here. And then we've got these useless turl or furl or whatever. Um, try to take them off. You can't get them off. <coughs> They're stuck on some gunk that just is not possible to remove. So they're there. Um, but apparently, I also read that you should never put a bike rack on them because your back of your caravan will fall off. So, yeah, so we kind of left that idea. It wasn't that much fun. <coughs> okay, let's go back inside. Up in here, we've got our um, gas bottle. Uh, just 
compartment. This here is where we did originally put our, our batteries for the solar, but they weighed 30 kilograms each, so they have too much weight on the cooler, so we had to move them back, and they're now under the sink. Totally a lot better. The, according to the chap who fitted my, our solar system, the one from England was like a, like a two mil wire and we needed about a ten. So he said it was just crap, um, it wouldn't, just wouldn't take the current. So we've put 360 watts of solar on the roof, which goes into two batteries that are down under here, down under the sink. Now as you, as you would come in the door back here, this bin is rubbish. Uh, it needs to be a lot wider because it's very hard to get anything into it. The blinds, fantastic. That's your night blind, absolutely awesome. The door lock is pretty dodge. A uh, good thump and I think she'd be... Hello, we've got visitors. Here's my washing machine. Fill it up with clothes, water. Spin it around. Whoa, bit fast. Spin it around nice and gently. Fantastic. It was costing us about eight or nine bucks every time we went to the, the uh, laundry shops. Well, that cost us 70, I think it was. So it didn't take many trips to have it paid off. And it works really well. Well, this is what I've adapted for putting the, the legs down, the support, the stabilizers. Just saves me turning a cranking your handle because I've got naked arms. Uh, so here, so these things are, are your blinds at night, or nothing, or in this weather like this, got the screen. You see we have one spotlight, two spotlights, oh it's getting good, three spotlights, and if you have a look up under here, you'll see there's a hole for the fourth spotlight, but it wasn't supplied with the van. A little odd. Quite odd, really. Um, I'm just looking through my list of stupid things they didn't do, did and didn't do. Oh, the, uh, the plug, the sink's great, works very well. It's got a little flip up here, which, unlike most, is actually the same level as the sink bench, which is great. Radio works well. Didn't have enough speakers, so we put some more at the back, because these were sort of working overtime to, to get the sound through. Works now, well now that we've got it uh, with the decent aerial. The control panel, um, it couldn't be a lot more complicated, I doubt. It works. Uh, we were the first, we left our home in Tauranga, New Zealand, back in May, just as winter was setting in, and we didn't have a heater for six weeks because we couldn't work out how to drive it. Even though, we were supplied with all these books. Now this particular book here is the manual supplied by Swift. And then there's one about this size. Oh no, that's just your fridge one. But in here, they contradict these books. So it's just a nightmare. Eventually, to work the heater, I had to contact the manufacturers and went through three or four different emails before we managed to get find out what actually was going on and what was wrong with it. But here yeah, we got it sussed and it's a fantastic heater. The lighting in here that we've got is great, except of course for that one that's missing. There's also a little light for a night light, one down here and one in the bedroom. Um, oven, very good. The top here flips down. You've got a grill over in here, uh, which is a bit, the actual grill pad, this thing, sits a bit low. So we ended up buying a pot plant bottom, you know, the, the piece that goes on the bottom of the pot plant, and we stuck that in below it so that it lifts it up if you want to make toast. A bit hillbilly, but oh well. There's your oven, and there's our new toaster, which is the one that fits on top of the element. Like so. Fridge, got a decent sized fridge and a decent sized freezer. 
plenty of room. To put your 160 kilograms of goods that you have, we've got food in here, but it needs another shelf. And when we bought that, this this cupboard was mounted so that it stuck out like like that. Uh, that. So I had to cut it down and try and get it so it's now flush over here like this. It was pretty hillbilly. So we've got that with food, we've got that with food, uh, down in here with food, under there with food, and then we've got storage in under here, in here, in here. This is a table, which is what we use, but if you have other people, there's another table in the cupboard. Um, this whole unit, I think, would be better if they had a wraparound couch, just would look a bit better. <coughs> This is an x air which works very well. Sucks all the food crap smelling away. But when you get up on the roof, it's only got, so your, your roof, the, the vent opens like that. So it's sitting down, it opens, but it's only got one arm, so it's opening up on an angle like that. So I don't think it's long for this world. Very cheaply done. Um, this here fell off within about the first 24 hours. I've had to glue that back on. Our mirror here, this one here, uh, came with the dirty goat crack out of it. So it was quite, quite lovely. Oh, and I'll show you back here on these cupboards. These ones here didn't shut. I think that one did, but this one didn't. If you look here, this one's flushly mounted against the frame, so it shuts all right. This one here, it's got about um, five, seven mil packing. So you'd shut it and it would, just wouldn't shut. Didn't ever show a shutting, but now it actually shuts. Uh, flooring was great. Carpet came, excellent carpet. <coughs> what else was puckerooed when we got it? Um, this door here, if you just come and have a look at the back here, it's uh, got a hinge uh, around here, it's got a roller. Well, the, one of the rollers was broken off, so when we got it, the whole thing was sitting on an angle like this against back of here, because they locked it with that for the trip, but with all the jiggering on a boat, it managed to break off, so that had to be replaced. Now, these cupboards here are good. They're, they're your wardrobe cupboards, but they don't line up. The cupboard didn't line up with the switch. So we had to put these packers in here to sh turn off the lights. And if you look along that cupboard, that uh, bar there, you can see there's a dirty great big gap, one end, and over here, we've drilled a hole for a rivet, but, well, must be lunchtime, we must go, better go, so we didn't bother doing it. And if you look up this line here, We've got about a 15 mil gap here and about a 7 mil here, so it's yeah, you know, it's just the it's the little things that nobody gives a tinkers about. As far as the um, quality control, which they're very they talk all about, I don't think they've no quality control. The man, he must be a total blind person that one because just doesn't work. Yeah, you know, this thing here, the sink. When we saw it on, online, it had a, a a sink up here, a nicely shaped sink. This one you can barely get your hand in. I mean, I've got girls' hands, and you can barely get them in. So I'm going to rip it off and put a an external basin up here. The shower has got a light in it and oodles of room. Got a really good shower head. Excellent. Works so well. We use this for drying clothes as well because. It's quite nice and warm back here. Uh, there's a gap there. When we first got it, water was coming up through it, so I had to silicon that gap up. And in the toilet here, there's a flap that has gone, because the toilet's gone, but there's a flap that goes down in here. And when we travel, for some reason, it's got, there's two cogs, I've found there's two cogs underneath. And even though everything's tight in there, as we travel along, somehow, it moves like that so it doesn't 
the flap won't open or shut, so whatever it is, it won't go the other opposite way. So you have to basically rebuild the toilet before you can use it, when you get to a destination, so it's quite, it's a bit tedious. Um, I have contacted Thetford, and of course they have a bit of trouble with emails as well. I'm not sure if their English is different to our English and they can't read, or perhaps Thetford is a... Um, I don't know, perhaps it's a prison or something over there and they're not allowed to answer emails. I'm not sure what the story is, but um, yeah, they're pretty slack as well. It's got good lighting in here. Across here, around the mirror. Just, yeah, nice, nice little touches. Uh, had no towel rail, so I had to put this on. Did have the heated towel rail, but that only works when your van is 100% level. If it's slightly out of level, it won't work. Toilet's very good, though the tank is a bit small. We're about three days and we've got to empty it. Can get a bit tedious. Under the bed here, we have a large compartment with all sorts of carry-on in there. Once again, works well. We've had um, trouble with them. At night, you pull the, the bed out from the wall and then, the, and then you slot this other piece of the mattress. This little squab here goes back in there, but we've found that the the uh, bed moves out too far, so we're putting a, a bar around here to stop it from falling out. Once again, just another little thing that they've thought of, you know, let them worry about it. This side of the bed has two cupboards. That size has one cupboard, three drawers. Um, having two cupboards is just rubbish, because I've got my shoes in there, I mean, you can see the length of the cupboard. Well, your average Kiwi is having an arm that same and along. I mean, it's true. So, but um, this is nice, the uh, headboard. It's two spotlights on the side. Um, we, we put our telly up on here. Works fine. The pushing and pulling handles that we've got at the front, two at the front and two at the back, are too high. I mean, I'm six foot, thereabouts, and I I had no leverage. My bit of leverage is down here. And if you look on their, their um, websites, they move them around. So the year that ours was built, they must have six foot six must have been the average height of their staff from um, India or Pakistan or wherever they get their staff from, probably China actually. And um, they were so, honestly, if they put them at one height, which would probably be around about waist height, and you'd have the leverage. Oh yeah, we had no plugs for, for the hand basin and that sort of thing when we, so we had to go and buy some of them because obviously the quality control people hadn't quite looked at that. And the reason this mirror had broken is because no one had packed. The mirror itself was too narrow for these particular type of hinges they've got, top and bottom. So I've had to pack them out. So that there's no movement because this was fine, but it um, it moved and then broke. Okay. So I've written to Paul, our New Zealand rep, the guy who did the work for us. I've written to Michael Jordan, who have now been taken over by some other crowd, the, the biggest caravan sellers in Britain, according to them. And of course. They can't read emails either. It's funny how many people can't read emails. Especially when you're selling the, the oh, it's called the, the Marcus Group, I think it is. Um, but yeah, no one can read emails over there. And so I've written to Swift. Well, it's owned by a guy called Peter Smith. Second generation, it wasn't his bright idea, it was his dad's. So over in New Zealand we have a, a basic rule that first generation starts the company, second generation builds it up third generation kills it. So whether Smith's son started working it now and is managing to kill it, I don't know, but um, yeah, the quality control, as I said, is just absolute garbage. So anyway, um, I've written to them, and they're quite coming out. There is one email for Swift, and that is for the reception girl. So whatever you want, if you want to speak to the CEO, you can't. Well, he's not called the CEO, but there they call him the managing director or something. You can't. So then I thought I'd go to the English company's office, and that was a very interesting read too. Uh, they've had more executive staff, the, the staff, executive staff turnover has been probably more than go through the average McDonald's in 12 months, 
uh, short, very short term, a lot of them, especially the financial advisors, seem to last a very short, short while. That's, that always says something about a company, well it does in New Zealand, I imagine it does in England as well. So I guess I asked to be put through to Mr Smith, and of course Mr Smith, um, he can't read either, which he's done very well in the business for a man who can't read, you know, it's reportedly one of the largest manufacturers of caravans in England. Um, yeah, I, I'm just pretty appalled at their lack of interest in, the, in their quality control, because, I mean, I plan to tell the world that they couldn't, they, they have no quality control. They make a fine, the product's fine, it works, but spend another two hours and it could have been bang on. But, you know, obviously we're a bit pushed for time or it's lunchtime or someone's got to go, you know, being um, extradited to another country because they're in, in, an illegal alien or whatever. So, yes, it's all a bit shocky. Um, I think that's probably about as much as we need to tell you today. As you can see, there's a clashing missing off that drawer. Well, that's one I can't find. Um, I would think 50, 60 percent of them have all come off in in time. Uh, there was one here, I think this morning, a new one here. Yeah, that one there is starting to come off. Uh, they all just eventually fall off. So that's another thing to be aware of when you're um, purchasing. Just have a good look at all this stuff and tell them you're not interested in buying buying it unless they're going to cover all those things. Uh, the door handles, the, these handles, you have to constantly re-screw them at the back because they're only held on by two little screws in the middle instead of one on either side as well. So it's, they move around, which is a bit, a bit annoying. Well, no, it's very annoying. Where you push your uh, drawers into, like over here there's a we catch this one here clips up into a catch in here um, if they don't line up then they usually fall off and if they fall off because it's only put into that wheat pixie type board uh, the screws have already slogged out so I fill it with um, that liquid cement let it go let it dry then I put glue on it and screw it with some new screws and when I've done that, it's been fine. I don't think they have liquid cement or silicon in England, would appear. Probably a market that would be open to New Zealand to supply them, or at least supply to uh, the Swift Group. In the uh, plug holes, we, we noticed that there was water pouring out. No, not pouring, it was just leaking slowly out the back of the van. It was a bit damp. So I had a look and I saw it was coming from the plug hole. I pulled the plug hole, the, the actual plug apart, the metal piece that goes in and screws under the floor and then on top and it had a piece of silicon about about that long and it was, you know, the whole thing is that diameter and there was a wee bit of silicon there on one so then I pulled the other four out, other three out and of course there was no silicon so I had to re-silicon them all so that we don't have water flying below the floor or all outside. One of Swift's comments on their website is the finest quality leisure vehicles that are rigorously tested. Yeah right. As New Zealanders would say, that'd be good for a two year. Um, so yeah if, if I ever get any replies from Peter Smith, the man who owns Swift, and I believe he owns Bailey's as well, oh I'll let you know. Don't wait up though, because it could be well, it's been five months so far. Haven't heard a word from the man. I don't think he knows I live. But I know he lives, and I'll be going to England one day, and I'm going to find him, just have a little chat to him, tell him what crap um, quality control he has in his company. Thanks.